Well, that that's going to be a really interesting question, and, and yeah, and and what kind of return will the Steelers get? I mean, it's I I I just I just have a feeling that they're going to get a first round draft pick. I mean, the, the um the Raiders got a, a first round draft pick for Amari Cooper, and Antonio Brown's better than him. No question. You know, it's, you brought up a really interesting point about his route running. So when A.B. was coming into the draft, one of the biggest criticisms um, was that he didn't run crisp routes. And I saw um, some quotes from Richard Mann the other day about when A.B. first came to the team that, you know, Mann's basically the, the previous wide receivers coach who just retired from the Steelers last year. And he said, you know, A.B. really needed to work hard on his route running. It really wasn't good, but he was very open to my criticism and he really worked hard on it. I still don't think his route running may be what it should be or could be. And it doesn't matter on the Steelers because you're right. Then we'll find A.B. The two of them are it's almost like the fates aligned when the two of them wound up on the same team, because Ben is the ultimate backyard football player and quarterback and A.B. is the ultimate backyard wide receiver. He has just this uncanny ability to see where how the play develops for the defense and where the open spot is. So it almost doesn't matter if he runs the right route because he gets where he can be and Ben finds him. And you, you watch these Steelers highlights. It's just incredible. And you really wonder how many of those plays worked out the way they were originally written. And obviously I'll never know. Right. I don't, I don't know that AB can, can, you know, succeed with certain quarterbacks. For example, I think he would be a disaster in new England with Tom Brady. Tom Brady is like the Lance Armstrong of, of, you know, football. And I don't mean just about the blood doping. Uh, just kidding. Ah. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Sorry. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's, I mean, they always said Lance Armstrong would know if somebody changed his seat height by one millimeter. Tom Brady is so meticulous. And when he wants a wide receiver to run down the field, eight yards, and to the right, two yards. He means exactly that distance and exactly that spot because he will throw the ball right there. He's, I mean, he's like that golfer that practices his swing over and over and over again. So when he releases the ball, he knows exactly how far and where it's going to go, no matter what the wind conditions are. AB's not that guy. That's why Ocho Cinco failed at the, with the Patriots because he was – a great footwork, you know, sort of make it up as I go along sort of player too. And he could get past the defenders and get open, but he couldn't get to the spot that Tom Brady thought he was going to be in and wanted him to be in. And honestly, I think AB will have that same problem. And any quarterback who plays that style of football will struggle with him. I really believe that. Yeah, I have seen uh, the Patriots where they will have acquired some good wide receiver from somewhere and – It'll be just one chance, just one chance where where the the, the receiver didn't go where Tom Brady thought they were going to go. That's it. He wouldn't throw to him for the next game or sometimes, you know, for the next week or the year or something. So, yeah, it, w- it would be a, um, a really bad uh, fit. And, yeah, he was – you're right. He, he was so good with – Ben and AB. I mean, I remember seeing some uh, – it was some Sunday night game where they just looked at each other. Ben gave a little nod, and I think it was against Indianapolis, and it was a touchdown because they they saw something in the cover, just like we got it. We already know it's a touchdown before before the play even uh, is snapped. It was it was amazing, and yeah, some of those. Oh, I don't know whether it was against New Orleans or San Diego this year, but Ben was scrambling around, and he was like it was on about the thirty or forty yard line, and he throws this perfect strike to the back of the end zone, and AB just happened to be there, and it was just like the most beautiful thing ever, and yet yeah, that, that couldn't have been scripted. It just, just he knew when Ben starts scrambling that he better start you know, moving around to get open and Ben will find them. And, and right. Yeah, it's, it's when, the, the when the, when the Wi-Fi is good, it's a very beautiful thing. Exactly. Exactly. And then the other question is, uh, you know, they're saying, Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is, people are, people are wonderful on Twitter. Uh, the, the, the Steelers are crumbling. They, they've lost Le'Veon Bell. They're losing Antonio Brown. The, the team is crumbling They're The window is closed. They're not going to win a Super Bowl. You know, 
Ben's been around. He's he's been a quarterback before Antonio Brown was around, and he did all right. So, um, and, and I have this feeling that the Steelers are going to be so motivated to prove everybody wrong. They're hearing these things that people are counting them out, and all these terrible things that they're saying about Ben. I think they're going to be super motivated. Uh, you know, I, I think you know huge questions uh, coming up this off season and how they're going to fill all the holes. But if, if they play it right, I think the Steelers will be just fine. What do you think? Couldn't agree more. I am much more worried about them improving their pass rush than I am about the unity in the locker room that next season. You know, it's amazing how a little blood in the water and the national sports media has just gone on this vicious attack on Ben. And when you think about it, the criticism started with AB complaining about Ben, but you haven't heard it from anyone else. And I think we can all agree, yeah, he shouldn't make some of the comments he makes on his radio show. It would be really helpful if he didn't criticize the players that way. But when it comes to AB, we're talking about one week, one game. It was after the Denver game. Other than that, I don't think he made any other negative comments about AB to the to, in public at all. And what was the first thing he said after AB, you know, went AWOL after week 17? Oh, I really hope he comes back. AB's my guy. He makes me right. better. He makes me a better quarterback yeah. and never and denied that there was any blow up at the practice the prior week and has never once responded to any of the negative things that AB has said. And yet there is this firestorm of stories. You know, Ben's a terrible leader. Ben's a terrible guy. Everyone in the locker room hates him. And I, I just think, again, what we said earlier, when once the combine comes, you know, they actually have something real to talk about for football. This will die down. But in the meantime, I'm actually not worried about the locker room. I'm not worried about the players. I think they will have a huge sense of relief if AB gets traded because they just want the drama to end. And that will make them tighter as a team. You know, the Steelers are at their best when they have a chip on their shoulder. Yes. I, I think that was another question is – is it a circus? Is it a culture problem? Is this a, it's like, I don't think so. I think it was a circus with one or two clowns and they're going to be gone. Like, you know, whenever, whenever people say, oh, the Steelers are a mess, they're a circus. And it's like, okay, why? It's like, well, look at Antonio Brown. Okay. That's one guy. Well, look at Le'Veon Bell. Okay. That's two guys. Oh, look at James Harrison. Okay. That's three. Maybe Martavis Bryant. Okay, fine. But they're all gone. Who else is this horrible person in the locker room? Nobody. There isn't anybody else. And it's it's funny that they're attacking Tomlin for treating players differently because I would say that happens in most locker rooms. Yes. Obviously, I'm not in any of the locker rooms, but it's hard for me to imagine that the other 31 teams all treat the players completely equally. Now, there are a couple things that I take issue with Tomlin for. For example, the whole Airbnb thing at training camp for AB, that's crazy. And yeah. it's fascinating to me that the beat reporters never said anything about it all these years, which obviously they don't want to put out bad stories because then they lose access to the team and the management's not happy with them. I get it. They have to earn a living. But when you have, you know, and I hope it's just AB. I hope it isn't anybody else that's getting to live, you know, off campus in Latrobe. They should, if if five players are living in the dorms, they should all be living in the dorms. Exactly. That that to me was a little extreme. But I can't believe that the other thirty-one teams all treat every player exactly the same every day of the year. That's just not happening. I saw something today where somebody said, uh, "You don't see this in New England." Um, you don't see these this preferential treatment. Like, are you kidding me? Or you mean to tell me Tom Brady doesn't get any preferential treatment? He has his own trainer doing his own training regimen, and he even recruited the other other people on the team to do this crazy training training regiment. Are you kidding me? Like, here's here's what I think about all that. You're right. Every every team has a star player, and they get preferential treatment. What Antonio Brown did was they took that did the proverbial. Uh, and sh- and he took that to a thousand miles, and he, j- you know, so and and this thing goes well. Why didn't you put a crackdown on it? Because if they put a crackdown on it, he wasn't going to react well to it. 
He wasn't going to say, oh, yes, okay, I will straighten up and fly right now. No, he was going to pout and demand a trade and, and whatever. And, and this this end game that ended up happening would have been happening a lot sooner. So this, you know, Tomlin is more than anyone getting all the criticism. You know, no matter when anybody was trying to place blame, it was, you know, everybody has a consensus. Well, this is all Tomlin's fault. It's like, he... You know, he he asked. I I think he he asked, he said, "You're a star. I'll I'll let you have let you get away with some things," and then Antonio Brown just just took that to a, a crazy degree. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Tomlin has a saying, you know, "I'll tolerate you until I don't have to," and mm-hmm. I think they're at that point. You know, Ike Taylor made an interesting comment about a month ago. Um, he said that when he was playing for the Steelers, Tomlin gave him free reign, and he took advantage of that, um, but he never abused it. And I think that's the key. If you have the right people in the locker room, you can treat them like adults instead of children, and they won't abuse it. When you have a character like Antonio Brown, that's where you get into trouble. I think things will be a lot different now. And, uh, you know, an, another big thing this week was Kevin Colbert giving interviews and in saying, Basically, I think he was saying what he said about Ben. It's like Ben is the leader and there's 52 kids and blah, blah, blah. I think he just said that just in reaction to all the national people just attacking Ben nonstop. And that's, that's how I took it. But other people took it as, wow, they they really – they gave Ben ultimate power and he – and you know, that was, what's he going to do with all this power? Like I don't – I didn't see it that way. Like, like what? Like, what? what are they, did, did they give him the nuclear codes too? Does he? Does he have a, a ability to, to to attack other countries? I mean, what, you, know, <laughs> you, know. I, you know, it's funny. I think all the real Steelers fans took it that way. They didn't even nobody nobody thought twice when he said kids. I mean, he was responding to a specific question, and nobody really thought twice about the fact that he said that Ben is the obvious leader because it's true. He is the only one in that locker room who's won a couple Super Bowls. And I guarantee you that Cam Hayward and Morkies Pouncey and David DeCastro and the other senior players are not offended in the least. I think they don't care about getting recognition as leaders. They just want to lead. Yeah. And, you know, I will say that Pouncey really has stepped up in the last couple of years. And I've been very impressed with him. You know. Everyone outside of Steelers Nation looks at that and they say, oh, they're just going to be more out of control. And again, I, you know, the national sports media is going to keep throwing gas on this fire because they're cold and they need to keep their hands warm. Yeah. Yeah. They need something to talk about. Exactly. And this, this gives them this gives them perfect uh, things to talk about. And that was another thing is, oh, well, it is also the fault of the player leadership, you know, back Back in uh, 10 years ago, this would have never happened. It's like, how do we know that the Castro and Cam Hayward and something didn't say, hey, this guy's out of control. You got to do something. And Tomlin or whoever said, you know what? Let him go. He produces. We'll put up with him because he produces. But the minute he doesn't produce, we're, we're, we're done with this crap. So we don't know what happened. And, yeah, we don't know all the all the stories. But, oh, man. I, I can't wait to actually talk about football with the team because there are so many actual football things g- going on. They, they have so many needs <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> it's it's true. I can't believe that this has consumed us for the past month. But I think part of the problem is that our offseason started much earlier than it normally d- used to and much earlier than any of us wanted to. I think that's been a, a big factor in where our conversations have gone in January. Yeah, and – and and really, there's one big reason for this is because you're right. It started earlier because they didn't win. Why are people not saying anything about the Patriots? Because they won. If D Ford in that um can in that AFC Championship game, if he lines up correctly and doesn't and is not off sides, Tom Brady throws an interception. The Patriots lose that game, and then all the criticism is on the Patriots of. Tom Brady's too old. What's wrong with the team? The dynasty's over. Blah, 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 blah. But they won. Like last year with the Steelers, when they had that national anthem controversy, it looked like things were going to fall apart, but they decided to put every all their differences aside and let's just win. And they did. And everything's fine. So I guess what I'm saying is this is all Chris Boswell's fault. 
No, come on, don't be that guy. Don't pile on it's I mean what what so many people miss, I think.